And so we continue on with the tradition of live streaming and talking about shit that has nothing to do with the video game I was currently streaming. Uh, I am streaming right now as of December 31st, 2021 at 5 in the morning. Again, the last full day of the year 2021. God. It might be the last day, but the 20s are just starting to roar. Anyways, so I was playing Super Auto Pets. Still gonna keep streaming Super Auto Pets, but I, I, I want this section to be its own thing onto YouTube. I could have made this an Isaac stream, but I play Isaac on the PlayStation now and you don't get the webcams and I just got my hair done did good. Ooh, so that's always a good reason to do things with the camera. Oh. So, we have some topics to cover. Again, I'm still in the Super Auto Pets category on Twitch TV right now, but I'm gonna be talking and shooting the shit and then I'll get back into playing the game. Just say. So we have, we have to talk about eSports Ready. I kind of delved on it on the last stream with what Slay the Spire, so that should be up on my YouTube. I plan on this being up on the YouTube. Esports ready. Um, NFTs. Gotta start talking about other things. So it was, it was definitely esports, NFTs. Is there anything else that wasn't in, like, in, I can see the general vicinity of things to talk about. I real. I got, this is a show off stream as well of things that I have, but I'm pretty sure it's, Esports, NFTs. Yeah, I think that's pretty much. But before we get into the heavy topics, the heavy hitters. So, like I told you guys last time, I got me another cup for the for the dice to go in. Okay, so the dice would go in here. Bam! Except they'd be out, but I don't want to take them out because they're always a pain in the ass to put back in. So I got me a dice. Um, a dice holder for my eventual game night. So if you guys are interested in dice, board games, you know, you know, a little bit of this. Except there's actually no tangible money or currency or any form of, of monetary value on the line. It's just you, you, you put dice in a cup, you see what the numbers are, and you have fun. That actually relaxes me. Who knew that you don't need to be a scumbag in order to make people happy? I don't know. YouTube, you sons of bitches. Anyways, so I got me the first cup was was like copper, bronze, goldish. Uh, I may have spray painted it black to the point where I ruined said cup. So then I was just like, I'll just buy a black cup that's already black. It's like, okay, here we go. So this is a metal cup, but the thing that I was planning on with the first cup, since it's like a metal tumbler, not the website, but an actual tumbler that tumbles around like a tumbler weed, <laughs> uh, is that when I stream, I'm going to be streaming anytime after 10 p.m. until 3 in the morning once I start going back to my um, work schedule, my IRL work schedule, because right now I'm technically on Christmas vacation. So once I start going back, I want these, the game nights, the house of Bob's gaming to be open on like Friday. So this this will probably go out longer, but if I ever do them in, in the middle of the week or something like that, it will be, my streams regardless will be anywhere from 10 p.m. until 3 in the morning. M minimum starting at like 10 p.m. So, when, you don't need to muffle cards to play them. You're not just slapping them so loud that you're breaking the sound barrier. However, I had to take into consideration jangling dice in a metal cup at like, two in the morning to not be an asshole. So I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll line it with felt. I'll make it look nice. And you could actually see the it better um, in the old cup because it was, it was thinner slats like bars. These ones are just like horizontal slats, which is nice, but you can't really see the detail. However, I thought about gluing the felt in there and I'm like, nah, what are you, a basic bitch or something? So what I did is I, ba -ba -ba -ba, I sewed my own sleeve. This is like the first thing I've sewn in forever by hand just for myself. So it's actually very um, sparkly felt. It's pure purple. The, the purple is much more closer to the actual, like the border that's around the frame right now. But it's just getting washed out from the lights. So I went and I sewed myself a, uh, a, a dice cozy for the cup. And it, it definitely muffles it a lot better than them. Let's, let's do a test, okay? I said I wasn't going to get at the dice. I'm a fucking liar. Okay. Dice go into cup. All right. Boom. Now, now listen to this. 
that's loud. Okay. Now, with our handy dandy patented let, let me let me do it again. You put you put the 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 cup sock inside of it. You pat it down. You you fucking stuff that bad boy with enough D20s to choke a fucking horse to death and then let's do this. Oh. Oh yeah. Look at that innovation. That worked perfectly. Guys. So if you ever if any of you ever have like um dice rollers and you are concerned about it being too loud um for like say people like are around you and you don't want to be an asshole uh just just always line a cup with with felt or something some type of fabric to damper the sound it really does make a difference I also kind of maybe want to get a couple of black lights, light bulbs, in order to, uh, to, to really make the... Because those, those dice glow in the dark, and I happen to have some skeleton glow in the dark gloves, and I just, I, I may want to go for the aesthetic. So I'm very proud of the cup that I made. Well, I didn't make the cup, but I, I sewed the, the inside of, of the thing. It was, and it was one, one long stitch, too, so it just went around, sewed around that, bam, done, did it. It's being loud as part of the fun. Yahtzee! It's Uno! You have Uno, motherfucker! It's free! Okay, so guys, again, look forward to game nights. They're gonna be great. They're gonna be a lot of fun. Things are gonna be rolling. I'm not sorry. Uh, okay, so today I decided to go out and do things in person. And one of those stops happened to be because... Apparently, yo, Richie Rich, I am having fun. I just, just go back like 30 seconds and look at the cup cozy I made. It's pretty cool. So, Elden Ring. Let's talk about Elden Ring. That's uh, specifically Elden Ring. So, again, uh, Bamco, of course, being Bamco, uh, released the physical collector's edition only through their website uh, when it first came out. And, of course, it sold out like that. And you have to pay like $180 up front for that piece of plastic and digital soundtrack. But anyways, uh, apparently got restocked in GameStop. Possibly all the other stores too. I just was like, I, I actually went to the game, uh, one of my GameStops around here the day that they restocked it, but I didn't ask them because I didn't check my phone yet. So I was already there, but then I left and I was just like, so probably for the better, I didn't waste $180 on one single thing. Elden Ring! Oh, I cannot wait for Elden Ring. Oh my god. It's gonna be so good. So, um, I went to GameStop. Now, they GameStop has that weird pre-order. Like, again, with Sekiro, I wasn't able to get the statue that I very much wanted. And, of course, other things that came with it. But it, come, it came with the, the pre-order bonus. Again, not sponsored by GameStop. Have to say that every fucking time. So, it came with this stupid little fucking plastic sword. Uh, that was a GameStop exclusive. They do that shit all the time. Uh, and this time they had something else if you pre-ordered Elden Ring in any form. Don't know what that little bonus was because it wasn't worth compared to the fucking Big Dick Chad Swing Best Buy deal where I did this with them for Resident Evil 8 because, again, GameStop doesn't offer um, steel books for some reason. I don't know why they don't have the deals to offer steel books with pre-orders. Those are, those are so much better than, like, Again, a reminder. I get this okay, so I pre-ordered um, Resident Evil 8 last time from Best Buy. Again, not sponsored. If I have to physically go buy the things, I gotta go to the stores that hold them. Who knew that's how monopolies work? So I went there, got this for free with the um, uh, pre-order of Resident Evil. And on its own, it's like 20 fucking bucks. Now it's marked down to 10 or something like that. These steel books, they ain't cheap, even though they, they only cost like 70 cents to, to make, you know. It's fine. Oh, I just consume. Don't ask questions. It's going to be okay. Anyways, so I looked up Best Buy out of more of a curiosity after I checked out the uh, GameStop. And it's like, oh, if you pre-order with Best Buy... You get the pre-order digital bonus content, which comes with any pre-order of the game anyways. And you also get the steel case without having to shell out $180. Well, 
or an extra 20. I paid $60 flat for the base game uh, pre-order uh, DLC and the Steelbook. So Best Buy has the best deal if you want to pre-order Elden Ring. Uh, without a doubt, that was fantastic. I would have very much liked the statue of the one lady, but no. I'm not allowed to have Yorm. I'm not allowed to have fucking Sekiro. I'm not allowed to have Redhead Lady with one arm. Feels bad. Feels real fucking bad. So, but anyways, I, I went to Best Buy, placed my, um, my pre-order there, but <laughs> I may have gotten something... Yeah, I gotten something, something wonderful, which is probably the greatest Funko Pop of all time, and truly my spirit animal. Finally, I have the one that matters the most. Is the latest Adventure Time collection now includes the Squeezy Mart Hot Trash LSP. All right, I had to get it. They also had the Bemo, but I didn't get it because I, I have enough Bemos already. I got default Bemo. I got little pink keychain Bemo. I got Marceline playing the the axe bass. Oh, I haven't even opened this yet. I want give me give me just give me the thing. Oh yeah, give me my spirit animal. You know that meme where it says like what people oh endless gaming oh that's cool. I mean you mostly have the Marvel pops. I have I have too many Funkos. I, there's one two three four five six. Right in front of me, not counting this one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, right there, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, uh, and then the whole bookshelf. And that's not that's just the ones in this room. How many beating babies do you have? What would you ever tell me? Someday we're going to have to delve into the Beanie Baby Handbook from uh, the 1999 guide. I have 350 plus Beanie Babies. Do you know how long I've been playing that stream to showcase my clout, my big dick swinging clout? You have no idea how. It's been in the years of making. I've been, I've been waiting to fucking. Do you know how many Beanie Babies are in this room right now? There is one, two, three. Hmm, actually there's not that many as there used to be because I moved them to the other room because I had to make room for Spyro because I'm a fucking adult. Uh, three, four, five, six. There's at least seven Beanie Babies in here right now. Currently. At this time. <laughs> so Beanie Babies around the... I got all the McDonald's ones. I got all... I got the Princess Die ones. I got all the fucking bears. I got them all. Remember when that was a craze? Oh, it was good times. All right, let's 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 get back to our current um, addiction to uh, plastic. Actually, let me leave that right here. Okay, okay. Let's let's talk about this real quick. Oh my God, I think this glows in the dark. Wow, they really are making the uh, Funko Pops in Vietnam now. I think I think I think this might have been a bit too much for uh, you know. Gotta put that up there as a reminder of how politics work. <laughs> Anyways, that's a, that's a damn good, that's a damn good Funko Pop right there. Again, everything's mirrored, so, uh, lumpy space princess. But again, the meme of, like, what people, how people think you are, who you wish you were, and who you really are. People think I'm Marceline, I wish I was Bemo. I'm Lumpy Space Princess. I'm a hot fucking mess. This, there's no getting around it. <laughs> you got sports editions? Absolutely. <laughs> you name it, I got it. I got the articulated fucking bears that they tried to rip off of the those little home country bears. I got those. I got articulated beanie babies. I don't have any of the new weird ones like Spongebob or Frozen Olaf. No, I, got, I, I have to have some self-respect. I have to have some fucking dignity. I am an adult. Thank you very much. And this is how I choose to spend my money now. <laughs> we don't know the Bernie babies. <laughs> Feel the burn. Actually, the, the, a real fun story about when Puddin was first a kitten 
in this household. All right. Once she started crawling around, uh, able to, to be free around after five to six weeks old, she started to find my stash of, of nice things. And that's when I started buying her her own, you know, plush toys and stuff like that that she could, you know, cuddle and hug. However, that cat is indeed a force of nature. She, she, she sent me a message loud and clear early on in her tiny little life is that she found herself a beanie baby just laying around. I thought it was out of her reach. I thought wrong. It was actually the, the collector's edition, the club beanie baby that was in a plastic tube. She knocked that bitch down and she cracked it open like a walnut, like a squirrel hoarding its stash. So when I woke up the next day, I found this beanie baby, right? The beanie baby was flawless. It was fine. The stitching, no bite marks, no tears, nothing like that. She ripped off the tag into three pieces. She knows what inherent value is. She knows what what value is, what, what bargaining is, what leverage is. That cat knows. She knows what leverage is. She's taken many things hostage in order to get her way. And I gotta say, she truly is my child and she has done me, she's made me very proud. That cat is a harbinger of vengeance and I welcome her into my life. Mm, Puddin! Freaking world's smallest Rottweiler. I swear to God, that cat can't be stopped. She really can't. She, she hit where it hurts. We get the we get the Canadian uh, beanie babies too when they were like, you know, shearing them at the border to like be like you can't have that many beanie babies. It's against the law. We got those beanie babies, and that was before Canada decided to lock America out of its damn country with passports. We, we you could just roam freely back then. What a time to be alive. I need a new passport. Mine's been expired for like, ever since COVID. Elmas Gaming, subscribe. Thanks for making that dolphin sing. Nice. Thank you again for everyone for the subs, <coughs> the donations, watching, having a great time, staying in chat, and like, you know, having a good old time. It's, it's like the most important thing is entertaining the masses while you're a streamer. I'm glad I'm doing my job. No, a little girl kicked your ass, Richie Rich? Damn, you gotta stay in your ground on that one. Oh, I remember when Furbies got banned because everyone thought that they would record everything and, and uh, you know, ruin the world. Meanwhile, you have yourself a, a phone in your pocket that, um, that, uh, just, you know, happens to be listening, collecting your data, even when you don't, you know, really, I might get to that story later on. It's pretty funny. I got, I don't have any of the real Tamagotchis. I got the, the knockoff bootleg Tamagotchis. But damn, I want myself a real Tamagotchi so bad. <laughs> he kept dying. No. Take that, Twitch Prime. You are entertaining as fuck. Nice. No, guys, again, a reminder. I keep this here next to me every day to remind myself how to get good by Ninja, by, by Tyler Ninja Blevins. All right, again, what is it? Right off the be the top of my head is a one it was seventy two something. How many? How many? No, it's got to be like page seventy two or some shit. Sixty four. Okay. No. No, I've already forgotten where it is. What is it like one fifty? Ah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Hold on. It goes on longer than I thought. No. Where's the fucking quote, Tyler? I must find it. I have to go through this to remind everybody the true meaning of streaming. Improve math skills with LSU. Develop strategy, repeat. Shut the fuck up. Why did I buy it? Why was this in the children's section of Barnes & Noble? Why was this in the children's section of Barnes & Noble? Why did I have to go into the children's section of Barnes & Noble in order to acquire this very cursed, um, 
told him, why should you stream at page 108? Let's see. It's 110. A little bit. It's around here. Internet. Mm -hmm. I hope chat's having a, a great time while I'm looking up Tyler Blevin. What fucking page is it? Ah, what viewers want on 126. Let us once again remind ourselves the entire reason of what viewers want. The biggest question in streaming is, why do viewers tune in? The best answer I have is that they want to get something in return for sharing their attention with you. Sometimes viewers are eager to learn more about a game. Sometimes they just want entertainment. And sometimes they're looking for inspiration. Others just want to be social and hang out and chat. But whatever their motivation for tuning in is, they need to feel like they're getting value from your stream. Otherwise, there's no reason for them to come back. Always pay close attention to what your viewers seem to want and try to deliver the best stream known to a relationship between a broadcaster and audience. Really is a conversation. <sighs> Socializing with your audience. No. Interactive. Socializing. Hot fix. Be the streamer you want. Oh my God. A role model. Oh shit. He, that's where he tells us to be a role model. There's another quote somewhere. That's not the one. I can't remember where it is. Criticism? Shrug it off or respond? I'm pretty sure it was on one twenty. I think I just read the wrong quote. I don't know. It's definitely a one hundo. Meet people. Make a little money. Accountability. I hope everyone's having fun while I don't read chat at all. Internet. Capture card. <laughs> I also love the fact that this book came out right before he sold out to Mixer and jumped the ship from Twitch, because all he's talking about is, is Twitch right here. Oh yes, no it is. They want something in return for, for sharing their attention with you. That is the quote. Guys, you want something in return, right? The only way you can ever be truly valued as a human being is knowing that you get something in return from someone else. Otherwise, what's the point in life? If you can't get any type of monetary financial backing for your efforts, how will you ever know that you have inherent value? How will you know that you actually are validated as a human being? Unless people pay you fucking money. How how will you know if you're truly validated at your choices in life? Unless everyone decides to like it on Twitter. You know, the likes are what truly matter. Not, n nothing else. Nothing. Oh god, you guys talked a lot. Oh shit. Get good at what? You have to get good poster in front of you? Nice. Thick brongus, that's too thick. I do have a respawn chair. It's it's the best chair I've ever had. I've had this chair sit for a soul of like a going on two years now? My my ass has completely just destroyed it, but that is besides the point. But it's doing pretty good. We got the personality stream. Oh damn. I don't know. It, it almost seems like just throwing money at a dude with money tends to give you more money. It seems like a, a sure investment. He's too big to fail, which is why Microsoft gave them their entire budget for Mixer to one dude. And yet Monster Cat 24 7 Jams always outranked him on the stream count. Just saying. They probably should have used that money a bit better. A little bit. A little bit. Maybe Ninja had some dirt on on Bill Gates we didn't know about. <laughs> I don't see anyone else with it. I love 
uh, the respawn chair because I have the one that the, the legs extend. So I, I actually use that. I didn't install the, um, the armrest because I, I hate armrests. So I just didn't put them in the chair when I built it. That's a pro gamer strat. All right. So anyways, I talked about shit IRL. I got me. So I talked about Elden Ring. I talked about the cup. I talked about LSP. Probably other things I'm going to either remember or forget about because I'm going down tangents and having fun with chat. What a disgusting thing. Having fun. God. Room cleaner it works great for VR lounging. Or I can't I can't use VR because um, I only got one good eye. So the third dimension eludes me even in real life. So it feels bad. Feels bad. Feels bad. All right. What do you guys want? You want esports or you want NFTs first? Which horrendous atrocity of mankind do you want to experience right now? What do you want? Chat. What do you want? NFTs or esports? Which one do you want? Which one do you want? I've never liked armrest on on desk chairs. Esports? Mm. Esports. Esports. Esports, you say? Fine. I must succumb to the masses, as Tyler Ninja Blevins has said. You must do whatever it is that is possible in order to whore yourself out to the masses and be beloved by all and have zero originality, thereby becoming bland. All right, let's 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 add some spice to this, shall we? <laughs> So, last stream, I did indeed talk about the whole Semler and Thorin situation. Mainly Thorin at this point, but goddamn, Semler ain't helping a lot of Monte Cristo. It's just mm. so. What happened is again uh, within what the past week? It's only been a week. Feels like eight years of this Twitter timeline bullshit in my feed. Holy god! Anyways, uh, the the ESL. Esports League, the official one that basically um, encompasses Counter Strike. What League of Legends? I don't know what League has. That's right. Maybe Dota. I don't know. I just know Counter Strike. Regardless, Counter Strike is the best known uh, ESL um, champion. I think also Rocket League. But again, uh, fuck me if I know that. Yo, Ganon Lucario. Hey, hey, we're gonna be doing stuff. We're gonna be shaking the dice. In the future, I got the cup ready. Be prepared to roll those bones. So, anyways, uh, the esports league has decided they want an, uh, an all women's um, esports league to concur next to the quote unquote everyone's esports league. Okay, so there's the main ES uh, ESL circuit, and then they want a women's only circuit. Which is perfectly fine, because it's the same argument for why there's different region circuits. There you have North American, you have European, you have South American, you have Oceanic, you have Asia, and you have everything else in between. Covers it. So they have already have different league setups. It's just that this one is now separated by gender. And you'd think these types of casters would actually be happy to finally no longer pretend like they give a shit about women trying to get into the, the major leagues by gatekeeping it from it. Because again, there are plenty of professional women video gamers out there who actually can make top scores. It's just that either they're not hired or let in or they get completely harassed into oblivion for various other reasons. It's just like how in certain game genres certain people excel better because they're not dogpiled on by fucking hate and goddamn criticism and just all types of trolling. Again, I talked about how in the fighting genre, um, professional league, you see a lot more black pro gamers because in that community, they're actually embraced. Whereas in other communities, they get discriminated against. It's funny how that still happens today. So even if people want to say, oh, it's, you know, white knighting, simping, it's not real. If you look at the facts, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. There's plenty of gatekeeping being had besides just um, encouragement. Also, 
a lot of female gamers are discouraged from pursuing it as a full-time passion. Again, I love Gwent to death. I'm great at Gwent, but I would never become pro at Gwent because I'm not going to dedicate my entire life to Gwent. I could, if I felt like it, just quit everything that I'm doing right now and just grind Gwent constantly and try to get to the top. But the reward for me for doing and investing all that time and investment for me would not pay off as much as it would for someone else, regardless of, even if we're at the same level in playing field, different things would happen, you know? Same goes for a lot of things. So again, uh, it's very common to see, uh, especially in the first person shooter genre, extreme, racist, homophobic, uh, misogynistic stuff, even if it's just LOL 12 year olds on, you know, voice chat, it's still harassment and it does get to people after a while. So having a league just for women gamers, perfectly fine because they're not going to take the prize pool money out of the other people's money because that's just, that's like how all the other leagues do. They have their own sponsors. The team still have to pay out a fee, licensing fee, coaching, um, everything else. So they would be able to raise their own money pool in order to compete, which is fine. Because exposure in any way is better. Because if you want to argue that there shouldn't be any women leagues, you have to argue there shouldn't be any region lock leagues, and that everyone should be equal on the ground, regardless of internet connection, latency, or skills. Because everyone's playing the same game, so therefore, regardless of gender, um... Monetary value, internet connection, everyone should be leveled under that assumption. And it's the stupidest thing. The the argument's already gotten the, the rug pulled out from under its feet. There is no argument. Exposure helps make things more more fluid. For God's sakes, in the Overwatch League, the only open uh, homosexual player that's been on there so far was with, um, what, Muma was on uh, the, the Dallas Fuel? D come on! And then again, uh, because South Korea right now is actually encouraging its its citizens to actually go towards uh, gaming as a, a legitimate career, whereas in the West it's still considered a joke. LOL, you're just, you know, playing video games, anyone can do that. In Asia, they take it much more seriously, and that's why South Korea is such high tier, because they get coaching, they get investments, monetary value. So they start getting the one-ups when it comes to having an advantage at a game, because they can actually grind and get paid for their time investing in the game. Whereas here, in America, for example, trying to get any type of monetary value out of someone to uh, sponsor you is, you might as well try to see a fucking unicorn out in the wild. It's not gonna happen. You're winning the lottery. You're getting struck by lightning when that happens. So there's plenty of factors going on. So the fact that you get more eyes more um, diversity in, and more paths to make money, these casters should be fucking happy. They should be happy that it doesn't involve them at all, but no. Oh my god, Simlar and Thorin saying like, oh, it's, it's the end of times, it's ruined, no vagina is allowed, if you're good enough, you could make it into the pro circuit, even though there's been countless, um, you know, testimonies of top-tier women players just not being hired by teams. If you don't get hired by a team, you can't play the fucking game in the pro circuit. I feel like I should be wearing this just to represent Thorn. Circus is in town. <laughs> oh, God. To be honest, I got my chair so I didn't know I could take them off because it reclines. Yeah, no, taking the arms off the chair is great. Oh, League of Legends is my favorite competitive game. Thorin is just, oh god. Oh, there's been some progress. Universities are starting to invest in esports teams. That's true. But even, like, again, also the, the, like, for me, as much as I love tabletop gaming and, like, real, like, RPGs and even strategy games, like, I don't go out into um, live tournaments that much because it doesn't feel as inviting when you're the only person going in. Like I, unless I know someone who's going into the tournament, I usually don't participate because it feels like I'm, I'm I'm walking into someone else's territory. You know, if you've never had the feeling of walking into a place and feeling like you're not welcome there or that you don't belong, congratulations. 
may you never have to experience that because a lot of people do and it's not fun so even though I very much would like to do a lot of things IRL with a lot of people I guess I'll just stream them for you guys this works out fine house of gaming for for Bob y'all are invited this seems very much like the early two well, yeah it is and but the thing is like again because of the personal Hero Quest remake is awesome. Nice. I'm still waiting for Edmund McMillan to release Four Souls and fucking goddamn tapeworms as a, to be physically in stores and or dickworms. I would like the, the mature adult only version of, of tapeworms. I will absolutely play dickworms. I, unfortunately not on Twitch. I'll have to open up a uh, an, an uh, OnlyFans account for that. Sorry, you guys. Again, I am too extreme for OnlyFans. I already break OnlyFans terms of service. You're looking at the only person right now who's not allowed to stream on OnlyFans. I'm too extreme for them. Sorry, guys. I know. That's a lot to take in. <laughs> but anyways. So, what was that? got count. Oh yeah, no, that's the thing is like, that was the difference with the Overwatch League or the Overwatch community when playing it. Like, playing it, the game is horrendous. TF2, love the TF2 community. I still love them to death. Everyone just wants to have a good time. That's why I never got into console FPSs because you had the toxicness already associated. Like, I never got into Halo. I only played um, Unreal with my friends in person. Oh uh, god, those were some good times. Played Doom, which is single player. No one ever played fucking Doom multiplayer. And then TF2 was just my place to go. And then all my friends got seduced by by Blizzard's fucking promise of, Oh, come here. Come here, little bit. You'll have fun in Overwatch. Come here. Come here. Come here. And they've all been fucking boozled. I as well. Though I, I, I always knew it. I just played along and then I kept, I just raged fucked it for no reason. Now it's dead, so long live the king. Uh, but, like, no, the, the Overwatch, um, community was a completely different beast. And apparently that's what a lot of communities are like, like League of Legends. Um, I don't know how Dota is, personally, because who cares? Uh, but, like, if you, if you don't see a group of people playing a game compared to playing another game, you might want to look at what the differences are. Like, I know more women who played TF2, and I met enough women gamers, and also a very robust, very queer demographic of gamers went to TF2 as well. Everyone just wanted to have a good time. They weren't bullied for, for uh, who they were. They weren't taunted. You fucking shoot someone in the head, and then you fucking teabag them, and then you just start taunting, and you spy crab. It was always meant for fun because TF2 never took itself seriously. It always knew it was meant for one thing, for fun. Meanwhile, Overwatch, oh, the Omnic Revolution and blah, 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 and then this is gonna be, this is gonna be revolutionary, guys. Anyone who says their shit's revolutionary is trying to make up for the fact that there's no real content to it. That's always the, the fucking giveaway right there. I don't want everyone, everyone's like, no, you feel, no, it's, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. Like, as soon as people, like, find a difference, uh, in, in what you are, even if they're different themselves, that's what they go for. That's, that's, that's what, you know, uh, how you want to hurt someone. So if it keeps digging into people, of course it's gonna fucking eventually discourage people from going to, to where there's, there's a sign saying, you're not welcome here. So I don't understand why, why, why these casters are up in arms about, about a women's league. When it would be the segregation that they actually want. But apparently even having any little bit of progress in having exposure to people who they could consider to be taking their germs. Remember with the Twitch leaks of data, the top 10 streamers, 9 out of 10 of them were dudes. It was not the titty streamers stealing the money from Little Billy. If people want to watch porn and if they want to watch titty streamers... They're gonna do that. They're not gonna waste their time looking up super, super auto pets to find streamers like that. That's not how it works. They already have their intent. People aren't stealing other people's jobs. People retain an audience based off of their fucking content, which is as I've proven already today. Science. It's funny how that works. Proofs in the pudding. <laughs> pudding. Okay. 
Ugh. It's okay, but there's some toxicity in there. <laughs> you because know, I casually play Fortnite. Yeah, the idea of having anything other than rent mode in a game in order to prove your worth as a, a gamer. Again, I, I mentioned this this um, uh, example last time. XQC, one of the top streamers of all time now because of his uh, fame, or infamy, I should say, from being the bad boy of the Overwatch League. He was able to do all this shit, get fined, Tens of thousand dollars be a homophobic, sexist, just no garbage piece of trash who did not, who still does not care about moderating his community because they're just giving him money. He doesn't have to give a shit about quality at all. He does, he's just, he's just bringing in those Pepe's left and right. Not to say that there's anything inherently wrong with Pepe's. It's just that, and I loved Pepe, but you gotta understand when people use something for a certain purpose, that's the meaning they're intending. Not the meaning you want it to be, but the hateful thing they want it to be. Or positive, too. It can work both ways. It's all about what the meaning is behind it. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. So, XQC was able to fucking ride that tidal wave of, of bad boy infamy all the way to the top. Meanwhile, let's consider him against his own peers. The South Korean players in Overwatch League. They're not allowed to fuck up anyway. As soon as they, they do something that is against their cultural norms, boom goes the hammer. Because they're supposed to know better. They're supposed to be the better minorities, as, you know, the West likes to propagate. They should know better and stay in their place and not have any form of personality that goes against the grain. For example, fucking on the Philadelphia Fusion, Sato. Sato was absolutely despised by... All the fans, especially South Korean fans, because he boosted accounts. That's all he did. Uh, granted, I agree that's, that shouldn't be happening, but compared to the sins of others, I don't think he needed that much hate towards him. Or like some of the other South Korean players, whenever they, they say something that criticizes the Chinese government, they have to start apologizing real fast, like, oh god. But really, any major player now has to do that, I guess, I suppose. Ugh. Angie! <laughs> oh, an adult site. yes. Oh, this stream is rated M for mature. Yes, indeed. Ugh. Those things are... You really can't fucking date because they're, uh... Yeah. Same with, um, the, the K-pop fans. And, and stands too, ruining it for the actual K-pop stars and all that. Uh, so, again, I'm, I, I went further into, like, the specifics of why a women's only CSGO league is not a problem. Thorin, on the other hand, very much has gone down, woo-woo, bye-bye, yeah, there is no redemption arc for him in this anime. Oh, God, he's gone, he's gone way overboard. He's, he had himself, like, a fucking... Mel Gibson-esque Twitter breakdown. Like, he started going into all the, the fucking red pill deep bullshit just because the idea, the, the concept of a women's only league just broke this man fundamentally on the inside where he could not stop the verbal diarrhea from happening. He still can't stop. If you go to his timeline right now, it's a fucking nightmare. He's going down anti-COVID. He's going down, um... <laughs> The extreme right wing war, uh, tunnel. Uh, ben Shapiro signs are coming up all over the place. I am not sharing my Star Wars toys with vaginas, thank you very much. I will not do that. I have standards. Okay, he's going the full fucking length of of just oof. I mean, there's a lot of oofs to be had, but this is this is one official yikes for the books. <laughs> no girls allowed. Men only. And yet, and yet, he's try. He's also trying to say that by segregating the genders, somehow, uh, the men are going to be undercut again. The idea of them losing any conceptual power for these types of fucking lunatics drives them crazy. Yet they have no problem segregating players based off of their regions in order to gatekeep. Oh, the Brazil players, their latency is too high. They don't. They shouldn't be allowed to play with North American uh, players. It just wouldn't be fair to them. 
Now, would it? Because again, they're assuming everyone in Brazil is poor and can't afford internet or anything like that. They don't have any problem with Australia being like 5,000 ping across the sea and giving them the same amount of coverage. It's funny. It's funny how that works. Oh, the, the India League? Oh, they finally just got their own league? And yet, you know, a country of 1 billion players, we'll give them like 1, 2, maybe 3 teams. That, that definitely covers the spread evenly, right? Life's fun. Star Wars toys, you say? Wars of stars? <laughs> and it's losing Julia. It's it's bad. And it's the same people who are decrying, who who are trying to say, uh, like I know, in his heart of hearts. This is the same guy who then is going to clutch his pearls and cry when he learns that trans women are on the same team of, of cis-born women and say, that's not fair to them. It's not fair. Even though, even though, might I just speak into the microphone real quick? Even though um, transgender, you know, testosterone is not steroids. It just increases the production of testosterone and decreases estrogen, which is why it's a medical form and not doping. Just want to remind, same with trans men. They're just taking testosterone. That does not mean that their fundamental uh, muscular structure gets any better than a cis-born man. It's almost like it's medication or something. Whereas, you know, Lance Armstrong just fucking slapped on that steroids and that auto peddler bike for how many races of the Tour de France? And this is fine. Cheating will always happen in sports because that's human nature, but trying to blame your woes on a fucking mythical monster that don't exist, that ain't Gucci, fam. This Just scaremongering. Fear factors. Hey, that was a show. Fucking Joe Rogan. Anyways. Again. Petty fear tactics are, like, extremely, um, guttural and visceral and effective if you have enough people panicking, which I think you all have been able to witness over the past few years, seeing that uptick of the littlest things setting everyone off, and then you can't have a conversation with fucking anyone. Anyways, I think I had a pretty good conversation with you, chat. Do you have any... Would you like to have a conversation with me on this point? Because I know... It's amazing that people can talk and express their opinions without just getting dogpiled on. But, like, again, it's just fundamentally a fact that if you're getting money from some place that has nothing to do with the money going to another place, you are not stealing that person's money then. Can we all agree on that? I think that is just basic economics. I really don't know how else to explain this to him. Or to anyone else. <laughs> Anytime Brazil is mentioned on the topic of gaming, I recently reminded the Sega Master System has yet to be discontinued over there. <laughs> Dude! Someone send me a fucking Sega Master System from Brazil. I'll take that, bitch. Oh, God. Yeah. I knew as soon as she appeared on the show and started to do well, people were going to just attack her. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even going down that. She got, oh, the estrogen gave her all the good thoughts? I didn't know that's how that worked, which is why all the, the top, you know, Jeopardy contestants are, have been men for most of the time. But then people are going to say, it's not fair to the women's record holders. And it's like, no, you dumb assholes. This is, this is, this is... Mm. It's almost like everyone has a chance to prove themselves when given the equal chance to prove themselves. It's just... If you had all the answers. Yeah, exactly. I love that there is civil discourse here. This is great. Thanks. A game show about showing off of your knowledge you are. People just really want an excuse just to be angry. That's it. But instead of doing it in a constructive way, they do it in the dipshit asshole way. Our shenanigans are fun and wacky. Their shenanigans are mean and spiteful. And that's what, that's the whole point of knowing what um, context is, is knowing what someone's real intention is. If you can't understand context, 
you're already dead in the water. Which is why when people react to the smallest little, like, off-color joke, like, it's the same thing as saying, like, 9-11 was an inside job, that type of stuff, regardless of how you feel, you have to understand there's increments of, of disparities. Of, of, there's disparities between, like, oh, I fell and tripped, to I jumped off a cliff and I'm dead. Those two things are not equal on the scales, which is why, again, I, I can't stand Twitter. I really can't, or Reddit, or any other echo chamber. Ugh, the mother fun just got really gross right there. Is because everyone who fucking dogpiles instantly just negates any good that could have gotten out of the conversation. Because if everyone's just instantly guilty and of the same veracity as just the worst crimes imaginable, why do we even have different forms of, of judgment basis, you know? Everything is just instantly the worst. And it's like, no, 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 context matters. People are allowed to tell jokes. If you're offended by the joke, I can understand that if the vast majority are offended by the joke and actually has malice behind it, that's when you have a problem. But no, somehow J.K. Rowling keeps flying under the radar and yet people are just eating themselves in their own communities. Feel bad for the poor millionaires being told on, on, on the social medias. I, my heart really bleeds for the multi-millionaires having to deal with public criticism for the things that they decide to do. Oh, that Elon Musk, he's just so wacky. He didn't just, you know, destroy an entire economy or start a coup in, you know, another country because he wanted his lithium batteries real bad, you know. Jeff Bezos has his dick rocket. It's fine. He's fine. He's going to be out of the solar system eventually. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Have zero opinions of yourself. Or for yourself. Of yourself. With yourself. Amongst yourselves. Among. <laughs> well, I won't be mad. I'll play Fortnite and blame lag for me being mad. I can never take it out on someone. That's just rude. <laughs> Twitter's rad as fuck. Sam, you fucking liar. <laughs> you bold faced fucking liar. <laughs> How dare you try to say that with 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 any form of validity behind it? How dare you? See, I get involved in in local politics. Again, might I remind everyone, my, my own personal little little belief system, is that you don't have to change the world or save the world in order to make a difference. Small things matter. If you're able to just help out one person, that's fine. You're good. There is no such thing as a quota for, for living your life in any way. You don't, you, nothing. You, you, but you don't have to go out of your way to be an asshole. The people who choose to be an asshole chose to be an asshole. They didn't need to, but it's, hmm, do I be a dick today or not? And some people just bash that fucking button into oblivion and they don't look back. But again, just making the littlest difference can, can just be enough, you know? You don't have to just burden the weight of the world on your shoulders. Just get by in life. Live your life. Enjoy your life and don't be an asshole. That's really all that's really all I could ask out of people. That's that's really it. That's all I want. <laughs> There's cool funny artist. Go cringe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, that was esports. Did I did I forget anything? Pretty much just go look at Thorn and whatever Thorn's doing right now. Don't 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 pull Thorn. Semler's also just Oh no, they won't be able to cast games. Oh, what am I to do? I forget Semler actually was part of the Overwatch League for the first two seasons. I completely forgot him. I always remembered Monte Cristo, all the others. I completely forgot Semler was with Hexagrams. Oh my god, I just, oh god. And then Mika Burton, 
I, I, I love her stuff. I've loved her since she was on um, Achievement Hunter with Rooster Teeth and all that. She was one of the uh, interviewers for um, at post-matches in the Overwatch League. And apparently, Semler was a complete dick to her for both being a minority and a woman. So, you know, that's nice. That's, that's always good to hear. It's almost like he's trying to tell her not to, to, to you know... Worry about things that directly affect her by, by people like him when power. It's almost like then you get the AAA industry right now with Blizzard, Activision, Riot, Ubisoft. Really all of them at this point. <gasps> I do like Farming Simulator at eSports. That thing is its own just precious show. Magnifique. Endless Gaming, uh, you just brought up a, a subject that I was waiting until I did like my, my Fight Club interview. Let's do this little, little, little tangent. Okay. Someday, I do want to do a full retrospect on Fight Club the book, Fight Club the, the movie, Fight Club the comic books, probably Fight Club the video game that exists, Fight Club the, 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 the all the, all the things about Fight Club. I love Fight Club to death. I it might also be interesting to see it from the point of view of someone who actually is bipolar and schizophrenic, but has a vagina. Oh, shh. That's, that's too far. We, we've gone too far. But the Fight Club actually did teach an important rule. Not to talk about Fight Club. You gotta talk about Fight Club, so you break that rule right off the bat. But that the number one thing is to treat those who keep society running, treat them with respect. As we found out during the middle of a pandemic that shut down all major, like, accesses. We kind of need those people to, to, uh, keep society going. Maybe don't, you know, disrespect them and treat them like garbage and actually be glad that someone actually is, you know, cleaning up your mess. Maybe. Maybe doing all the things you don't want to do so you pay them money to do the things that you don't want them to do. Again, I always hated in school, like, people saying... Oh, you have to go to, you have to graduate high school and go to college and make, uh, become a doctor or a lawyer or make as much money as humanly possible. Then you can go back to your bullies from back in school who are pumping gas at the gas station and say, Haha, I am better than you. Because that's the American dream right there. And it's fucking disgusting. Because it never made sense to me of like, if someone's making a living and able to survive and provide for themselves in this hellscape of, of just a capitalistic nightmare, uh, why would you make fun of them? Why would you ever make fun of someone for making a living regardless of the job? It's, it's a very disgusting mindset that gets baked in very early. And I, I hope a lot of people are finally waking up and realizing you don't need to belittle other people in order for yourself to have worth. You really don't. It's funny how that doesn't need to happen. You don't need to make someone else's life a miserable hellscape because they probably have their own problems to begin with. You don't have to go out of your way to be an asshole, okay? I'm just naturally an asshole. It comes very easy to me, okay? So again, Fight Club was very much right. Always tip in America because we don't pay our servers a living wage. They have to live. And then that also counts for the busboys, dishwashers, um, prep cooks, anyone else that you don't see in the front of the restaurant making the, the, the food, prepping the food, feeding you, you know, serving you, all that stuff. Same goes with anything else. You, you work at a factory, you have people who have to pack, handle, ship, uh, cleaning, uh, janitorial, if they're doing manufacturing, all, it's almost like it takes an entire team of people to get something done on a large scale. It's almost like they're doing their job to make money to live. They're just having fun breaking their backs, being exposed to chemicals. They love it. They do it on their own all the time. It's crazy. Anyways, that's my little tangent of a, a dive into like the future Fight Club little shenanigans. It's just stay tuned for that. I need to hydrate. 60 second ad break while I hydrate. Blah. Hate mandatory tipping. <laughs> mm. <sighs> <clears throat> <laughs> 
four monitors. Nice. Yes, Elm's game. Ugh. It's sad that you need to tip to begin with, you know? It's almost like they should be given a living wage to begin with. Because then, because it's, it's a very, um, very clever way of putting blame on someone doing their job and dictating whether or not they deserve the money they make off their job based off an experience. Because that's what it is, is instead of holding the employer accountable for the service you get, you're blaming someone with a face that you can look at and say, they fucked it up. I don't need to pay them a living wage. I don't get tipped at my job. Therefore, why do I have to leave it to This is a very common mindset in a lot of people who, when they go to restaurants, they have just been militarily trained to be like, it's if I don't get tipped at work, why should they get tipped at work? Because they think that the, the tip is an actual bonus to the employee without realizing it's their actual income. And so, again, it's the simple things in society that really can have a massive impact on how you view it. So, yes, you can view tipping as whether or not you agree with the service you had, whether you liked your meal, whether you want the restaurant. But on the other hand, it also, with me, if I don't like a service that I get from, which is very rare, but if sometimes you do go to places that you don't like, like maybe you go to a casino and you had the saltiest chicken in your goddamn life that you've ever had and it's just like, I still tipped, but I'm never going to eat at that restaurant again. That's how I look at it. If you're not happy with the service you get, do not give them the repeat, you know, um, clientele. You vote with your money. Now, I can understand when people don't tip well if they do have a really bad experience, but even like a dollar or two. At least, you know, that, but the people who, like, go out of their way to write nasty fucking, uh, comments on receipts, that's just bitter. That's just someone, something's wrong with that person. But again, it's, it's, it's class warfare pitted against each other of the people doing the work and whether or not it's up to your satisfaction, the consumer. Instead of seeing it as, this person had nothing to do with your food getting cooked, but you're going to take out your, your frustration on them instead of the manager who's probably the one fucking it up because they can't run it well to begin with, the owners. Everything, any type of problem that is in a finished product starts the head. If a leader, manager, or anyone else in a position of power, whether it be movies, directors, producers, or anything like that, creates a bad product, it's on them. Because they're the ones who get to dictate where funding goes to, who gets hired, who does what, it's all in the leadership. And if your weakest link defines who you are, you fucked up as a leader. That's just how it is. That is a truth of life. And that ain't gonna change anytime soon. Oh god, it's just it's just like how like with, with the whole rise of Uber drivers and DoorDash deliveries and all that, like people people just lash up at those people for for no goddamn reason. It's awful. Again, if people feel like they have this false supremacy over others based off of arbitrary stats or anything like that, they're going to be assholes. It's just it's just adding fuel to the fire, you know. Yeah. I could never work in uh, the food and beverage industry. I would just, I would just fucking like, I would not do well against a, or no, a Karen would not do well against me. No, thankfully <laughs> in like retail and shit like that, when your own personal, if someone just, you know, in Philly, when I was selling my own work, if, if someone was, I never had this happen to me, but if someone was to, to start a, a little bit of a, ooh, a little bit of a, in the back of your throat, like just, but, uh, you know, you never have to deal with them again. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, 
Not okay with it. Back east? Have much of an accent. I'm not from Philly. I lived in Philly. I'm actually a New Yorker. Except everyone, everyone who comes to the stream thinks I'm from Austin, Texas, and that's just... I hate knowing that the Northeastern accent has been bastardized by our fellow emigrants from the Great Northeast down to the Dirty South and destroying our reputations by mixing in with the culture. How dare they? How dare they sully our very fine New York accent? Yo! <laughs> no, I have, I have the most rural yet... It's, it's very weird, my region's accent. It's the most rural yet urban accent a New Yorker can have. You either have full-fledged Brooklyn, Manhattan, all that kind of shit, or you have yeehaw, all right? I'm right in between the middle of yeehaw and ayo, was mad at you. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <sighs> very, very specific accent, all right? Extremely specific. You couldn't tell? That might also help. <laughs> it's very regional. <laughs> Old Tommy Radio. Oh, the pizza, by the way. Good. You chose wisely. And not Chicago. Those bastards. You know, it's funny. Every Everyone I know from... I don't know anyone from the state of Illinois or anyone from Chicago. I know a whole bunch of Midwesterners. And it feels like every Midwesterner who is not from Illinois or Chicago fucking hates Chicago more than anything else in the world. I've never been to Chicago myself. I want to go to Chicago at some point, but it feels like every Midwesterner just treats... I guess Illinois is the jersey of the Midwest. That's how they're trying to paint it. I don't know. That's, that's just what I keep getting the vibe from. Every Midwesterner just hates fucking Illinois. In winter. Oh, nothing like the, the Great Lakes just coming right at you. In the winter. Don't worry. It, it was like fucking 60-some degrees the other day. It's barely snowed now. The very first real blizzard we get here this year is going to murder us. Well, to be fair, I guess we didn't get a blizzard. No, we got a blizzard in early 2021, but 2022. That's going to be fine. No, fuck Chicago. It was it's for 25 bucks. <laughs> mm. Alright. Do we want to talk about NFTs now? I've been streaming for four and a half hours. I've already dedicated at least an hour and a half to to the the first part of this. We gotta make this somewhat digestible for you two. And I also gotta start restreaming Super Auto Pets while I'm in the category of Super Auto Pets. Uh, tobacco is not cheap here in, in New York, let me tell you. We, we, we have a vehement anti-tobacco. It's so funny because going into the uh, Pennsylvania, I've never seen so many people smoke in a major city than in Philadelphia. New York is one of the most strictest tobacco law states in the entire, like, nation. They do not like it. Mm-mm. Come in. <laughs> it's fine, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh. Let's talk about NFTs. Because we have to. Because this is the timeline that mankind has chosen to go down. We chose poorly. So, my Twitter timeline recently has been filled with nothing but a fucking, well, I guess they, they're, they're, they're pretty similar, uh, man-child tantrums and NFTs. I guess they're both the same. I mean, one, one of them's, I mean, no, no, no they're, they're both equally bad. It's just, you can't, you can't escape it. It's just... 
What do, you, what do you want cancer? Do you want lungs or do you want heart? It's, it's the same thing. It's still cancer. It's still gonna kill you. I know. I want my fucking hover car. I've been bamboozled. Constantly boozled. So, NFTs, of course, non-fungible tokens, are part of cryptocurrencies, the blockchains, blah, 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 blah. The reason why I want to talk about this again, because I have to, is because recently there's been a lot of, I guess, bamboozling in the NFT scene. Whereas people are getting their wallets hacked, servers are shutting down, um, people are just straight up stealing shit that they thought was a secure money. It's, it's not... And then the best part is in the blockchain, it tells everyone what happened and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's just like, ha they have your virtual money now. Isn't it great? Zero repercussions. You got boozled. So, recently there's been, and also all the, the art thefts and shit like that. So again, anyone trying to say NFTs help the artists, I, I really hope that those, those darling independent artists known as Google, Nike, Amazon, Ubisoft, oh, the, I, I mean, they really need the spare change right now. Again, people who are trying to, like, go to bat for these things are just grasping at straws, and you, it's so easy to just prove their... Their, their claims, and yet they just won't fucking hear it. And, like, okay, so, another thing, but I, I want to go down this road real quick. NFT video games are a thing, and they're horrible. But the thing is, is just like with mobile games, this is, they're, that's just the mobile game, um... template that they took, where... Say, uh, you, you Candy Crush, you have to, you can play, like, for five minutes, and then you just gotta start paying, or you pay, or you wait. So it's pay to play. NFTs are just like that. Except, I was, I was actually very morbidly curious to check out these NFT games after that attack of the, the show, um, fiasco with, uh, what was his name? Well, oh, Ganon, Ganon, weren't you the one who put that in, uh, give, give a brief summary of the attack of the show? Uh, thing of what happened because I went into that and then the game that they actually had on the fucking uh, Goddamn show Yeah, you did tell me about it So if you want to go and chat to let everyone know a little little summary of what's going on So I don't have to repeat myself is that the the NFT game that they showcased It's like how Neopets used to be Club Penguin all the old it's NFTs are just very expensive flash games for no reason other than clout so I actually looked up that game, and then I'm looking at, like, how do I even get to this? So, you have to set up uh, a wallet, one of the digital wallets. <laughs> Wasn't there for the game part. Oh, he brought up the game. Oh, you, you need to watch that whole thing. It's real fucking funny. And then he tries to actually um, sell. I guess the time he got cut off by the staff. Yeah, because he was trying to promote his own form of cryptocurrency. Well, not cryptocurrency, but his, his like, um... NFTs. Yeah. Gambling Newgrounds. Little mouth. You know, E-Bombs World is still around. When was the last time you guys went to E-Bombs World? I bet you I just blew your fucking mind because it blew my fucking mind when I realized E-Bombs World is still around. Oh my god, it won't fucking die. Anyways. <laughs> you the man now, dog. <laughs> God damn it. You want to know who's still posting weekly content on a regular basis? Foamy the squirrel. That's all I'm saying about that. Is it any different from what they were making back in 2003? Nope. So, anyways. If you've seen one Foamy the squirrel, you've seen them all. Congrats. Now you don't gotta watch them now. So. You have to make yourself a virtual wallet. You then have to invest real money into the cryptocurrency of your choice. So you have to pay. And then you have to get the wallet that's of the metaverse you want to be a part of. Then you have to actually transfer said wallet to the other wallet. It's all just so complicated that even someone who has the slightest interest of NFTs and cryptocurrency. Do you know how many fucking times I got to say, whoa now. Don't go too far down to the rabbit hole. There's so many safety nets to prevent you from getting involved in these scams. 
and yet somehow people are still getting tr- ensnared in this. Like, it's 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 like if you had a a a fucking you were going down a staircase, and every staircase had like plexiglass right there, and you had to break through the plexiglass in order to get to the next step. It's like you get to step one, and it's like, all right, I'm turning back around. These bastards are just fucking flying through there at rocket speed. And it's just like, so in order to even get involved into these things, you have to just willingly be a part of this movement. Again, everyone's drinking the Kool-Aid who's a part of this. They've, they've invested so far deep, they can't get back out, which is probably another reason why they keep pushing it, is because they actually had to do all this work for something that they hope to actually profit off of without realizing... Nah, I was like, I don't so you had to do all this fucking work in order to to play a shitty fucking flash game to hope that you make like three million dollars after putting five thousand real dollars into the machine. This is the worst form of fucking lotto chances I've seen in a long goddamn time for people being that disillusioned. I know the the tax law is gonna be great. It's gonna be funny. Oh, you thought you could hide money in from from the the American government? Oh, you mean the people who still love to have property tax? No, 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 no. They they want pony up. So I went down that little fucking insanity loop of just being like, just let me see what the game is, and then I just gave up. And I was like, holy shit, there's actually people who actually already do this things. So I was like, oh my god. So. But the thing is, right now, the biggest NFT seller right now is OpenSeas. And you already have all the illegal art theft going on being sold as minted as legitimate NFTs. But the reason why actually taking the image and quote-unquote selling it actually doesn't matter at all. It's all a lie. The only thing that people can actually buy from an NFT right now is the hyperlink. Now, it actually is physically possible, and I've I've looked into these arguments before, to upload any form of digital media onto the blockchain. So, a hyperlink only takes a few kilobytes in order to be saved into the blockchain, which reduces the amount of uh, mining it takes. So, it drastically reduces uh, money, real money, real energy, and real, you know, um, uh, manpower in order to save said things, which is why... Uh, a couple of, like, blockchain-esque websites that are out there that are video formatted, like, re- make sure that, like, it's it's less than even TikTok. Like, the amount of money those servers have to pump out or have to intake in order to keep these things going is insane. I think it's something of, like, it's several thousand dollars per byte by the second or something like that. It's crazy. So... The bigger the file is, the more theoretically you have to pay for it in order to be stored onto the blockchain, which is why NFTs are only selling you the hyperlink. You don't actually own the image, and you definitely don't own anything physical. But here's the fun thing about hyperlinks. They can be anything, can't they? So, again, when the art theft gets mentioned and OpenSeas has to um, remove the artwork, they're not removing the NFT. The NFT gets changed to a different image, and I've, 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 I've joked about this before in the past of how, like, um, at some point, you know, if everyone just uh, opens up their, their NFT gallery and all of a sudden it's just a dick, th- I mean, you could technically do that, but it started to sink in more about how cryptocurrencies have always been an argument for a decentralized currency, aka, I want to buy illegal activities and not get traced, meanwhile, the entire fucking uh, laundry list of receipts is on the same blockchain, so have fun explaining that to a grand jury. But people really do think that cryptocurrencies equal I get away with doing illegal activities. The number one illegal activities that cryptocurrencies are going to start being going to if they aren't already besides drugs, but things that actually do physical harm, child pornography, snuff films. That's what it is. Hold on, let me read chat real quick. Well, to multiply their investment by 6,000%? Yeah, I know, it's crazy. So again, when you start to get into the uh, waters of illegal activities, don't be surprised when illegal activities happen. And here's the thing. 
So a lot of the people who have been getting scammed out of their um, cryptocurrencies by doing these NFT um, bait and switches, all they're doing is they're clicking onto the hyperlink thinking it's an NFT when in fact it's, you know, it's a Trojan horse. It leads them into the, it's, it's code that leads the um, scammer into their wallet to clean them out dry and there's nothing they can do. It's just like when scammers who do those um, robocalls and are able to hook victims onto the line and then be like, hey, I need your peer-to-peer -peer access remotely from your PC to my PC, and then they, you know, hold it hostage. It's the same exact thing. It's it's hostageware. It's, it's ransomware. It's fucking malware. And because it's a hyperlink. You can do whatever you want with a fucking hyperlink. You can disguise it whatever the fuck you want. And that's the thing. Here's another thing that's been going on recently, is with the NFT metaverses, if one of these, like, say if Bored Ape Yacht Club ever just went bust and they couldn't run the servers anymore, well, then you don't get access to your hyperlinks slash NFTs anymore. The, the, once the servers are down, it's lost. You can't get it back. It has to be constantly online in order to work. And that's what a lot of the pump and dump scams do, is they take all your cryptocurrency as soon as possible, then they shut down the servers and there's nothing you can do about it, and they have your actual money that they can redeem for, for real, you know, monopoly money. So what's to say, hypothetically, stopping, oh, I don't know, a hacking group from hacking into one of these, these servers that contain the NFTs, and then all of a sudden deciding, well... Everyone who owns a hyperlink on this server now owns a hyperlink to very illegal child pornography. Then all of a sudden everyone's got owns a copy of child pornography. How how does that work in a court of law? Does anyone want to delve deeper into this Pandora's box that is eventually going to happen? Someone eventually is going to hack into these servers and just fuck it up for so many people. And it's either going to be hilarious or just the most depressing thing you've ever seen in your fucking life. Because that's how servers work. If they're going to get fucking got so bad, if they're already falling for the, the hyperlink scams of the switch and bait, it's only a matter of time before someone actually gets through the security breach. And then your blockchain doesn't mean shit because it's all just nothing but child pornography. That's a very plausible future. That awaits these people. Imagine imagine if Mark Cuban opened up his gallery one day and it's like, uh-oh. Then then how do you fucking dump it? How do you get rid of it? You can't because you have the hyperlink and as long as the hyperlink's up, you can't edit it. Because you don't own the actual fucking server. Uh, for God's sakes, we just came back from a pandemic where the oil pipeline was taken down by one person doing ransomware, not thinking it would cause a huge... Uh, fucking scare in America to the point where people were filling fucking garbage bags with gasoline because they thought there would be a shortage. That guy actually didn't want to cause that much trouble and he apologized very much for it and he felt bad. Which, I mean, granted, he was a dipshit for doing it in the first place, but again, people are underestimating how much a security breach can actually fuck shit over. And yet, just blindly accept those terms of services and give them your data. It's free. It's free. It's free. Just accept Epic Games at face value. It's free. Mm. I love reading Terms of Services, if you guys haven't figured that one out. Even past NFTs. It's true. Now, I haven't watched any of the South Park episodes uh, about things. I haven't watched a brand new South Park episode in at least ten years. <laughs> first game. Yeah, the toilet paper one. Never, never forget that. The college professor. Yeah. The virus got released from testing. Ha! Huh? That sounds like science fiction. <laughs> never could that possibly happen in this society. I should rewatch them, or I should just like catch up on South Park at some point. But there's just so much to do, like rewatching. I have I've actually rewatched Witcher season two. That's saying something. I really love the very first episode. The Brux episode's great. I highly recommend that. If no, if you don't watch any other episode of The Witcher on Netflix, just watch the Brux episode. It's good. It's 
Episode 1, Season 2. Because the rest, I'm not gonna lie, the rest of the season I'm still confused as fuck, but it's it's so much better than the first. So I'm gonna say when I'm not playing Gwench. I won't spoil, no spoilers for anyone else. Like, I, I can't be spoiled, I've already watched the whole damn thing. Ugh. So, so yes, the, the fucking entire point of these NFTs I'm, I'm bringing up is A, it takes a lot of time and effort to actually fall for one of these. So, of course, the people who are in too deep don't want to be look like fools or look like they lost anything or, or lose face value or clout. They're in for the long haul, which isn't very long. And two, the amount of shit that can go wrong is it's, it's right on the line. At any point, it's just going down and then this fad is over with. You want to know what happens when Funko Pops no longer become... Uh, a fad, an interest of society. I just have a piece of plastic laying around here. A couple dollars off. You want to know what happens when Beanie Babies don't retain their value of, oh, let's say, let's go to a random page. Let's say, okay, issue price, $5 for Teddy the Brown Bear. 1998 value, $1,000. The far off distant future of the year, 2000, $5,000. I don't think that worked out too well for them. Again, I, 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 Amiibos, they're right here. Have they any intrinsic value? No, but I enjoy them. These are fine. Everyone can have guilty pleasures or collectibles or things that make them feel happy. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when it actively damages not just you, but those around you. That's called a fucking problem. <laughs> At least this is a look at this. How how is this not perfection? This is this is this is peak mankind right here. You are my spirit animal LSP. Guide me, guide me through this time. I made I I made a a cup lighting. Remember remember that time I did it. Anyways, I should probably get back to uh, playing Super Auto Pets on Twitch TVs. But, like, I, I just got my hair done did good, so I, I had to just scream for, for no reason into uh, the void. And I hope- and, and thus, I conclude my TED Talk. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hold on. I thirst. I thirst. Can we talk about the Logan Paul Pokemon Game Boy things real quick? The Game Boy Colors. If you guys haven't seen, Logan Paul made himself uh, his own Pokemon coffee table out of uh, out of Game Boy Colors, uh, where he uh, placed them all in uh, resin so you can see through the table. And it's a Pokemon theme, but it's, it's, it's like Nintendo's. I actually really like it. I think it's aesthetic and pleasing as hell, and I'm actually very glad that Logan Paul was able to express himself in a form of, of entertainment creativity that wasn't recording dead bodies in Japan. I, I, he, he might have made himself up. This goes back to my, um, uh, my bringing up on, on, say, like, Twitter social justice and stuff like that, where every, like, Everything a person does is scrutinized at the same level of maximum thing. I don't like Logan Paul. But I'm gonna give him credit where he comes up with something that, that looks cool. Like, it's not a Damien Hurst where he's trying to resell it for like five million dollars. Now, if he does do that, then he's a complete scumbag. But it just seems like he made himself like a little hobby. Like, he, he had himself a little like side project and he just happened to have Game Boys and shit like that. And it's like, I don't care if the Game Boys were broken or not. I don't care if someone else could have theoretically bought those Game Boys. I don't care about rarity or shit like that. He bought them. It's his property. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Someone someone just fucking set a Tesla on fire. N not on accident, mind you, but purposely. And no no one gives a shit about that. But, like, again, it's all about, like, the personal... So, again, if Logan Paul just does something benign, we don't have to put it all the way to the max. Don't, we do not have to judge everything he does at critical levels because then it starts to make his other things like 
filming, you know, suicide victims for entertainment values kind of starts slowing it down. So the Logan Paul thing, I got no problem with. If I want to take all my Funko Pops, melt them down, and then just make a throne out of them, I can do that. Do you guys remember years ago when Game of Thrones first hit the, the mainstream, being a hit in society? I remember, like, hundreds of people making their own Game of Thrones. And someone actually made a retro console throne out of, like, what, a hundred or so, like, Nintendo 64s or some shit like that? And, like, people went wild for it. It's like, oh, that's so creative. It's like a sculpture or something. Logan Paul's got, like, 12 Game Boys sitting in the back, and he's like, I'm just gonna just put them in, in, you know, plastic. And it's like, okay, cool. And then people just, like, went, are, like, tearing them apart. It's ridiculous. Like, seriously, save your extreme criticism for when it's needed, because otherwise you start to devalue your own fucking criticisms. Because it's clearly not up at the same level as filming a dead body for YouTube kiddos, okay? Ah. Oh. Again, this is, and then, like, do you know how many collectors are out there who, who still have things in the box, never get used, they'll never be used, the, the priceless, pristine things? They're, those are sealed up forever. No kid's ever gonna have those or have fun with them, and they're at an extraordinary value, false sense of, of, uh, value. So, like, again, he's actually using it for, like, a table, and I think that's pretty cool. So, I don't know, I, I thought it was neat. But, again, I still don't like Logan Paul, but, like, I'm not gonna fucking break his balls over making a goddamn table. <laughs> Compared to the other sh- Like, he's he's definitely into the NFTs. Those are scams. Him doing scams are, are the thing. Him making a fucking Game Boy table is not the worst crime he's ever committed. Let's put it that way. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Let me see you become a true gamer, Bob. <laughs> right before the blow up. Oh, no. I know Game Boy Colors right now are artificially, like, at, at high value. So it'd be, like, the same as if he was, like, if he made a collage out of all the foil Pokemon cards. Again, he has the right to do it. All the people who, who like, eat Pokemon cards because they're they're, like... Uh, tipped enough on stream, so they decide to eat a fucking cardboard card. There's no difference than that. Like, the guy who bent the, 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 <laughs> the rainbow Pikachu because someone gave him $20 on stream before he opened the pack, that thing's priceless. I'll, I'll link that to the Discord. But, like, again, once it's someone's, like, ownership, this is theirs. It's not a living being, so I don't give a fuck what they do with it at that point. I really don't. Now, if you put a child in resin and made it into a coffee table. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> you guys, look at my child table! Dude, I... <laughs> No, I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say because it might, it's, 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 oh, it's gross. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. You'll never know what I was about to say. Ha ha ha! Let that sink in and fester inside you. What was Bob going to say? No, you'll never know. Ha <laughs> ha! Super Smash Bros. What? See, I, Twitter's just, just garbage. It's just trash. Yes, there is a Discord link. Boop! Sparky went to sleep early. He missed out on all the fun, so I can't summon him to, to do the thing. So there's the Discord. Might I remind everybody to I shop, I Patreon, I Gamer Tag, Discord again for good measure, mm, Donate, and Spotify. And then we ditto. Think about it. saying that. Fuck police. Woo.
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh God, Twitter's just. I hate it. I hate Twitter. And I hate Reddit. I did tell you about my shop. There you go. God damn, Lucario trying to gaslight me. God, I'm just telling on you, liar. <laughs> I should shop. Maybe it's Swedish. I don't know. Yeah, it's a Hergenbergen. Yeah. Hergenbergen. Schmergendergen. Ikea. Duh. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. I think that pretty much covers the, the gambit of emotions I have right now. Would you like to play some Super Auto Pets? Will I win a single game of Super Auto Pets? YouTube, you'll never know unless you go on to my Twitch and watch the VODs. Just saying. I think it's time for some Super Auto Pets. Freeze frame for image here. Ha! Huh. No, no. I know how to end this. Uh... Do as she says!